अगूज़बिल्लिमिनशैतवानजीम बसमीम् अल्लाम स्टूडेंट्स हाव यू ऑल आई होप यू आर फाइन एंड आई होप यू हैव यू आर थ्रू विद योर समर टास्क एंड द वीडियोज़ विच वर अपलोडिड रिगार्डिंग द समर टास्क हेल्प यू अलॉट नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट विद आर बुक यूनिट नंबर वन एंड एज यू ऑल नो वी विल बी स्टडिंग ऑक्सफोर्ड मॉडर्न इंग्लिश फॉर ग्रेट फाइव नाउ द वेरी फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज अबाउट द वर्ल्ड इन अ वॉल बाय जीरल ड्यूरल नाउ जीरल ड्यूरल वॉज अ इंग्लिश नेचुरलिस्ट ही वॉज अ जू कीपर he was an author and a television presenter jiren durrell was very much famous about his uh, love for animals he wrote about 33 books on animals and especially his uh, knowledge his study his observation and his experience regarding the wild animals now let's start the topic and it's a very interesting topic it has been taken it is a small extract taken from the autobiography of jiren durrell it's my family and other animals now this extract tells us that how much he loved the animals how and through which processes he have gone through and a very interesting um, uh what should i say uh, something which happened in his life and which affected his life uh, i hope you will enjoy reading it there are certain words which are difficult in it i always recommend my students to before starting or reading the chapter they should go through the chapter underline the difficult words and find out the meaning themselves as i believe that a student should be aware how to use dictionary now the topic is the world in a wall you can understand by the topic that there is a complete world in wall as well there are so many creatures the insects the spiders and the flies lizards living over there i haven't noticed but maybe sometimes when we see different kinds of uh, small insects and animals on the wall then we realize that there are certain things which live over there now the way the writer is describing it let's give it a start and i hope you will uh, understand and enjoy it it says the crumbling wall that surrounded the garden alongside the house was a rich hunting ground for me now the writer over here is actually depicting the picture how the wall look like so he says the crumbling wall the crumbling it was breaking it was about to fall it was old it was an ancient wall there were many cracks in it and the the writer says that the the plaster has been um, removed from it uh, but now this outer skin was green with moss bulging and sagging with the damp of many winters it means that the wall have gone through many seasons and the wall was giving that ancient look because of that and the plaster was bulging bulging means when it is swollen towards outside and sagging which is hanging you must have noticed in your house as well sometimes uh maybe in your villages that when you go there you have noticed that the paint is removed and it is bulging and sagging and then we think or feel to uh, mend it or to make it or to the whole surface was an intricate map of cracks some several inches wide other as fine as hair hair and their large pieces had dropped off and revealed the rows of rose pink bricks lying beneath over here the writer is explaining that particular wall which he thinks is a hunting ground for him 
and where he can find out different animals so he is telling us that as many winters have passed over it so the plaster or the paint of the wall is bulging and sagging which mean it is swollen and it is hanging down and there are many cracks in it due to which he is able to see different animals the insects and the flies and the spiders and he is so keen to observe them and see how do they grow and how they are interacting with the environment so the writer over here is describing the wall that it is in it is so damaged that he can see the the red bricks under the plaster of the paint the inhabitant of the wall were a mixed lot over here the writer means that the inhabitant means the resident the 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 insects those who were living in that wall were a mixed lot mixed lot mean that there were numerous insects there were of different types now the writer over here is explaining that which animals were there which were working there uh, in the daytime which of them were seen in the night time so it says and they were divided into day and night workers the the writer over here is using a very beautiful word for them that they were day and night workers they were not actually workers but there were some animals and insects which were seen in the daytime and the others were seen in the night time so over here the writer is saying that they were divided as day and night workers the hunters and the hunted now there were some animals we have even noticed uh, ourselves also that some of the animals eat the others they are their prey and they hunt each other they eat each other so it says that at night now over here it's a short list given of the animals those who can be seen at night time at night the toads and geckos were the hunters their prey was the population of stupid absent minded crane flies moths and all shapes and sizes and rooten beetles hurrying with their nights work by day it was difficult to tell the difference between the prey and the predators everything seemed to fed off everything else the hunting wasps search out caterpillars and spiders the spiders hunted for flies the dragon flies fed off the spiders and the flies and the swift multicolored wall lizard fed off everything now in this paragraph the writer is telling us that once you notice you would not realize who was the prey and who were the predators matlab who were the hunters and who who has been hunted so the list is that most of the time the toads and the geckos could hunt the stupid absent minded crane flies moths which were of different shapes and sizes then it says that there were rooten beetles also who were working at night at day it was difficult to say who has been hunted so it says that everything seemed to fed off everything like you cannot differentiate who was hunting whom so it says that the hunting wasps search out caterpillars so wasps would go and eat caterpillars the spiders and the spiders would hunt the flies the dragon flies the spiders and the multicolored you must have seen uh, lizards uh, on the wall of your house that they eat everything now the writer over here in the next paragraph says but my favorite were the shyest members of the wall community who did not seek any attention the writer over here says that he noticed many insects and animals but for him and his favorite was the scorpions because they were a bit shy and they were dangerous 
and they didn't seek any attention they were not outside all the time they were always shy and inside the plaster of the wall they were also the most dangerous you hardly ever saw one unless you looked for it and yet there must have been several hundred livings in the cracks of the wall if you gently lifted a piece of the loose plaster away from the brick they're crouching beneath it would be little black scorpion an inch long looking as though he were made out of polished chocolate now in this paragraph the writer is explaining the each and every part of a scorpion it tells you that how dangerous it was how shy it was but when he had uh, a, a, a deep or a clear look at it so it was like a polished chocolate over here the writer is comparing this um, scorpion with the chocolate and he says that you would never see there were many but if you search for it from the plaster under it they were weird looking things with their flattened oval bodies their neat crooked legs the the enormous crab like claws bulbous and neatly joined as armor and the tail like a string of brown beads ending in a sting like a rose thorn the scorpion would lie there quite quietly as you exam examined him only raising his tail as a warning sign if you breathe too hard on him in this paragraph the writer is telling us stop in this paragraph the writer is telling us how the scorpion look like it is described in detail and it is the the writer is comparing and telling us that how beautiful it was and how it was ready to sting because the the scorpions are always ready with their tail high in the air so that if they feel any danger they are ready to sting so the writer is telling us that this was his favorite creature in that wall then one day i found a fat female scorpion in the wall wearing what at first glance appeared to be a pale fawn fur coat closer inspection proved that this strange garment was made up of mass of tiny babies clinging to the mother's back i was enraptured by this family and i made up my mind to smuggle them into the house and up to my bedroom so that i might keep them and watch them grow up with infinite care i moved the mother and family into a matchbox and then hurried to the villa now the interesting part of this chapter starts over here the writer says that one day he saw a, a female scorpion which when he at the first glance looked at it so he thought that the female scorpion was looking as if as if the scorpion was wearing that fur fawn color coat but when when the writer went and saw and and he inspected uh he came near to it and he saw that actually the female scorpion was having babies on its back and it really uh, was uh, you can say that it fascinated the writer and he decided to take that scorpion home so that he can watch him he can uh, observe it that how does it grow and how these babies will turn into big scorpion so he just smuggle them smuggle mean that he took them in a secret way that he placed that scorpion in a match box and he decided that he will take infinite care infinite means uh, uh, more 
that he will take more care of him and uh, of that scorpion and the family entire family of the scorpion he placed them in a matchbox and he hurried to the villa hurried to the villa he went to his house it was rather unfortunate that just as i entered the door lunch should be served however i placed the matchbox carefully on the mantel piece in the drawing room and made my way to the dining room and joined the family for the meal dawdling over my food feeding roger surreptitiously under the table and listening to the family arguing i completely forgot about my exciting new captures at last larry having finished fetch the cigarettes from the drawing room and lying back in his chair he put one in his mouth and picked up the matchbox he had brought oblivious that the end of my happy days was about to come i watched my eldest brother interestedly as still talking loudly he opened the match box now what happens that when the writer gerald he placed that scorpion in the match box and he very secretly take it home because he wanted to see how this mother and the baby is the entire family grows up he wanted to observe it so he just placed it in the match box and when he entered the house he saw that all the family was ready to have lunch so all of us have that mental peace in our drawing rooms uh, under which we have this uh, fireplace or we keep heater for it so that uh, piece of a metal or it is sometimes made up of marbles so we keep uh, sometimes decoration pieces on it or any other thing which we use so that is called a mental piece and he just placed that match box over there and he started having his lunch so the writer over here that he started feeding his dog whose name was Roger and his elder uh, brother Larry was uh, very um he just had his lunch and he took out his cigarette and he was talking to the family and when he saw that the match box was lying on the mantel piece so he was talking and he was taking out that cigarette and he was having conversation with now over here the situation is that when even us if we are having lunch or dinner and we are have uh, sitting with the family so the writer over here is saying that they were having discussions and conversation and they were having arguments over something so he completely forgot about his new captures his new captures the, the match box which he brought and he placed it on the mantel piece so the writer over here is saying that i completely forgot about it and when my brother got up and he was uh, talking with us and he was in conversation with us he wanted to light up the cigarette so he was talking and when he saw that match box lying on the mantel piece he just picked it up and he didn't even notice that whether there are match sticks in it or not so he was just having uh, arguments with the family and he was about to open the match box now please pay attention to the next paragraph which is very interesting how all the situation changes and how all of them react towards that match box now i insist to this day that the female scorpion meant no harm she was nervous and a little annoyed at being shut up in a match box for so long and so she seized the first opportunity to escape she pulled herself out of the box with the great rapidity her baby is clinging on desperately and settled on to the back of Larry's hand there no not quite certain what to do next she paused her sting curved up at the ready Larry feeling the movement of her claws glanced down to see what it was and from that moment things got increasingly confused 
as we were discussing that the writer Gerald says that when I place that scorpion in the matchbox and I secretly smuggle it to the house as he wanted to observe it and he wanted to see them how do they grow up. So he, when he went home and he saw that the lunch was ready to be served so he just sat over there on the table and he placed that matchbox on the mental piece. So his elder brother was having conversation with the family and he just got up to light up the cigarette and he saw a matchbox lying on the mental piece so he was talking to the family and he didn't realize that whether that matchbox was having any sticks or not so he just opened it here in this paragraph the writer explains that the matchbox was very small for a scorpion and maybe that scorpion was a bit annoyed or nervous or maybe uh, it wasn't comfortable in it so by the time Larry opened the matchbox so that scorpion came out of it and Larry didn't notice it he was talking to the family and when that scorpion felt that it has some space to go out so that when he opened the matchbox the scorpion came out and it was walking over his hand so when Larry noticed even we if sometimes uh, feel some movement on our hand on our feet so we just try to find out what is so this is how Larry reacted that he just noticed it and when he noticed that something was with with the claws a claws are a bit sharp so he noticed those claws on his hand and when he noticed it now the entire situation of that room changed and let's see how it happened he uttered a roar of fright that brought Roger out from beneath the table barking wildly. With the flick of his hand he sent the unfortunate scorpion flying down the table and she landed midway between Margot and Leslie scattering babies like confetti as she thumped on the cloth. Now this is an interesting situation that when Larry noticed that something uh, having sharp claws was moving on his hand he just screamed out and when he screamed out the dog under the table the writer Jiren was actually feeding the dog at that time he got confused because it was a sudden change in the room and the Larry started shouting and screaming and when he hit that scorpion from his hand it landed on the table where the younger brother and sister of the writer were sitting so it says that the babies of the scorpion were shattered all over the dining table as as the confetti confetti are those shiny small papers which you must have seen in the competitions when they announce the winner they shower those small pieces on that winner those small shiny pieces of paper are called confetti over here the writer is comparing the babies of the scorpion with the confetti and he says that when Larry just hit his hand and that scorpion landed on the dining table so all the babies were scattered on the entire table and how all of them got frightened and how they and with that there was a rapid change from peace to chaos thoroughly enraged at this treatment the creature sped towards leslie her sting quiring with emotion leslie leaped to his feet overturning his chair and flicked out desperately with his napkin sending the scorpion rolling across the cloth towards margot who promptly let out a scream that many any railway engine would have been proud to produce eek look out look out they are coming screamed 
Margo. Now in this paragraph, the writer is telling us how the entire situation changed. When the family was having lunch, they were discussing different things, they were arguing with each other, the, the writer was feeding his dog and it was a normal routine day. But all of a sudden, the entire situation changed from peace to confusion. It is very natural that if you see such kind of animal which you know is very much dangerous, human react in this way and this is how the family of the writer uh, reacted. So it says that when Larry hit his hand and the scorpion landed on the dining table, so it went to Leslie. Leslie was got so emotional, he got so scared that with his napkin he was actually hitting and trying to, to, to save himself. He turned the chair and he wanted to escape from there and the scorpion went near to Margot. Margot is the younger sister of the writer and Margot started screaming and over here the writer is comparing the scream of Margot with the uh, sound produced by ra uh, railway engine. So it says that they were shouting and screaming and they were telling each other that look out it's coming and all of them were trying to escape from there. All we need is a book, roared Leslie. Don't panic. Hit them with the book. Now, in such a situation, even we, if we, I myself, if I see a lizard, I start screaming. And uh, we just try to find something to hit it and uh, to get rid of that situation. So they, uh, Leslie roared me, they, they were shouting and screaming and this is that all we need is a book to hit it and don't panic, don't get confused and don't get panic and they, they wanted a book nearby them so that they can hit that scorpion with it. Mother completely bewildered by this sudden and rapid change from the peace to chaos put on her glasses and peered down the table to see what was causing the pandemonium and at that moment Margot in a vain attempt to stop the scorpion's advance hurled a glass of water at it. The shower of water missed the animal completely but successfully drenched mother who not being able to stand cold water promptly lost her breath and sat gasping at the end of the table unable to protest even. Now this is something very funny and uh, very uh, cute also. Uh, the students can also watch this uh, part or this particular um, scene on the YouTube as well. The you can subscribe to Knowledge is Power and there the, the there is a video with the name of the world in a wall and you can watch it out there. The best thing about this book is that all the videos are there on the YouTube and you can watch it and you will understand the situation more clearly. Now let's come back to this and we uh, were discussing that how the uh, younger brother and sister of the writer reacted when the scorpion landed on the dining table. In this entire situation when they were planning to have a book and hit it and they wanted to kill that scorpion, the mother was very confused when she was looking at the entire situation and she couldn't help it out. So she wore her glasses and she was trying to look at the things clearly so that she can plan to do something to uh, help the kids. So what Margot did, 
that when the scorpion was coming towards her so in that uh, rapid situation she didn't uh, understood what to do she sh she took a glass of water and rather than throwing it on the scorpion she completely drenched it on her mother and the water was so cold that the mother could even forget how to take breath and she was confused and she was watching the kids and she don't know how to protest because it was suddenly that the water went on the mother now get a knife hit them with the book shouted larry that boy will kill the lot of us mother leslie's suggestion that the whole lot be killed was squashed now what happens that all of the family is getting irritated and the situation got so uh, hyper all of them make uh, make the situation so tense that all of them were uh, screaming and shouting and they were looking at the gerald that it's all because of him that he always brings such thing to house and now all of us are in in uh, this situation we don't know how to react by the time a certain amount of order had been restored all the baby scorpions had hidden themselves under various plates and bits of cutlery the result of this incident were numerous while the family still feeling angry and frightened moved to the sitting room i spent half an hour rounding up the babies picking them uh, up in the uh, a teaspoon and returning them to their mother's back then i carried them outside on a saucer and reluctantly released them on the garden wall roger and i went and spent the afternoon on the hillside for i felt it would be wise to allow the family to have a break before seeing them again now what happens that the situation got so tense all of them were so afraid and none of them know what to do with it some were saying to take a book and hit it the others were saying to get a knife and try to kill it and then all of them were looking at gerald that he is the one who always brings such things to the house so all of them the entire family went to the sitting room and now this was his duty to to bring all those things at one place and take them out of the house so the writer over here says that it took half an hour when he was collecting all the babies with the bits of cutlery they were hiding in different places on their table so it took him half an hour and he says that in a saucer he took that scorpion he placed all those babies on its back and very reluctantly reluctantly means that he didn't wanted to put that scorpion back on that wall but he has to because he didn't had any other choice the family was very angry about the situation so what he did that he spent the rest of the time out of the house to make the situation calm and let the family feel a break now larry developed a phobia about match boxes but from my point of view the worst repercussion of the whole affair was that the mother decided to try to stop me from exploring the animal world now the writer over here is saying that he tried to control the situation he gathered all those babies of the scorpion he placed them on the mother's back again and he kept them on a saucer and he went out and placed them on the wall very reluctantly he didn't want it reluctantly he wasn't uh, happy about it so he just went and he placed them over there and he says that regarding all this situation what happened wrong was that his brother larry was then he developed a phobia phobia is when you are afraid of something so whenever he saw those match boxes larry would be afraid that maybe gerald have gave kept some animals or insects in it so every time he saw a match box he would get afraid of it and he says that after all this situation that happened on that particular day on the uh, dining table was that his mother made the writer stop that you will not 
explore the animal world anymore and what she did is that you are running wild again it is high time you receive a little more education she said i'm getting you a tutor so she she got angry and she got so annoyed the mother that she decided that she won't let jiral to explore that wall or any other animal which were there in the surroundings and she said to make you stop there is only one option and that is to have a tutor for you i hope i have explained the topic and uh, if there is anything you don't understand you can please comment and let me know i will definitely respond to it thank you so much allah hafiz